Anyways, so welcome, welcome one and all. So we're going to get started here. So Linux email clients give me a migraine. They do. Um, I'm sure they've given a lot of you migraines, uh, depending on what you're trying to set up or what you're trying to accomplish. So before I dive too deep into that, this is where I get to be narcissistic, a little about me. So uh, I put this up, uh, what? I cannibalized this from a presentation I gave last year at my actual company I work at. Um, so I'm not going to read it you because, again, as I mentioned a moment ago, that pisses my wife off. So I'm going to let you guys read. Uh, does anybody get... We'll have a little fun with this, though. So does anybody know what yak shaving is? I do now. What's that? <laughs> I, I was going to say, she does that. Anybody who wasn't in the last talk? No. Um, do you know what yak shaving is? Okay. Yeah. What's yak shaving? He's easy. Like, mm? Yeah. I mean, yak shaving is when you find a problem that you need to solve before the problem you intended to solve. You keep searching until you've, well, shaved a yak in a mountain somewhere else in order to fix your first problem. So, so yak shaving, the way that I usually define it, that's not wrong, by the way. I'm, I, I, I will not combat that. That is, that is absolutely true. Yak shaving is a joke from the 90s from Ren and Stimpy, where you do the same task over and over and over again, right? Um, uh, until it's just completely pr repetitive, ridiculous, or whatever, because you don't know how to automate it or otherwise not make it repetitive, right? So that's yak shaving. You have dated so. yourself yet again. I have, I have, I have. So, so now I've dated myself a little bit. Um, you two didn't date? Who, her? Who are you? Bazinga, you I love it, yeah, never, never. Uh, no, just went straight into everything. Um, does anybody get the uh, top reference? If anybody's watched any of my talks before. The senior infrastructure engineer. Yes, sir. Wasn't that an airplane that Boeing built in the uh, mid-1990s? <laughs> I like this guy. I'm happy you're here. That's, a, that's not even a joke. So, uh, the no, senior... As a matter of fact, compared to the 787, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so the senior infrastructure engineer of 777th degree. So um, that's also partially a movie reference, I won't say, because I'd like this to not get taken down on YouTube. And... Um, <laughs> The, uh, the senior infrastructure engineer part is kind of a joke, and I, I say this in every talk every year. Um, titles and technology to me are completely pointless. They mean nothing. Um, I could be, you know, a 12th degree black belt in CTO, you know, methodologies of garbage who develops who's DevOps on the weekends. It means nothing. I'd rather buy you a beer or have lunch with you and you tell me what the hell you actually do. Because then I'll actually know what you do, right? Not some stupid title that nobody who understands or knows what the hell you do, gave you. Titles are pointless. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So now, I didn't do this in my last talk, but I feel like this talk necessitates it. Let's set some ground rules, because we could get very charged about very various things here, okay? Because there's going to be a lot of people who are like, I'm expecting one thing or another. Time out. We're going to set some ground rules as to what we're going to do, okay? So... Basically, we're going to hit on X11-based email clients. So terminal email clients, whole own thing, okay? Um, not that I don't love them or that I dislike them. We're just going to focus on X11 right now, okay? Um, I could insert Wayland joke here. Um, so we are, the goal is to connect to an Office 365 backend at a company who doesn't understand why that's a bad idea um, and loves Microsoft, right? Um, so... Uh, terminal email clients, like I said, whole other topic. Electron apps make me cringe too. So for all the developers here, that's either uh, they're either like yay or they're like screw you. I make an Electron app. We'll come back to that later. <laughs> but yes, I'm not the biggest fan. Um, attempt to keep an open mind. All I ask is is that if you disagree with anything, please call me on it. I'll be more than happy to discuss it with you. I will love to discuss it during the presentation. If you feel super strongly about it, um, and we're just kind of trading happy, sophisticated, civilized blows, I will happily be here afterwards. I will, I will verbally spar with anyone who wishes. That's no problem. I actually enjoy that. Okay, so understand. All from a good place here. So, uh, does anyone disagree with any of the ground rules as they're laid out so far? Excellent. Okay, Evolution Mail Client. That's where we're going to start. Um, so 
Evolution's been around for a long, long time. I'm not going to go into the history too much. But anyways, here's what it looks like on Solus with the default theme. It's very white. Um, so, excuse me, you'll notice that there are pieces that show you contacts, calendar, tasks, memos, mail. It looks very <coughs> sort of outlooky, she right? And depending on how you have it configured. So that's fine. So sear this into your retina. That's what it looks like, okay? Because we're going to talk a little bit more, less visual aid, more thing. So when should you use this? When you need a complete replacement for Outlook for Office 365. Why? You get mail, you get contacts, you get calendaring. It all actually works um, if you configure it right, okay? And the configuration is also a part of this. So the earlier talk was kind of, here's at a high level how you can work in an Office 365 workflow for messaging and mail. And, you know, if you want to try and use Teams and poke your eyeballs out and, you know, how do I sync OneDrive and like that stuff. This is going to dig much deeper into this and some of my personal happiness and hatred. Um, so we're going to buckle up just a little bit. So the features. So provides... Like I said, mail, calendar, contact support. Integrates well with GNOME and Budgie desktops. That is not to say you can't make it work other places, but that's generally the ideal scenario to make it work. Um, and you'll see why in a few moments here. Uh, decent search. Is it great? No. Does it suck? No. It's okay. Um, are there times it makes me grumpy? Yes. Does it make me any more grumpy than using Outlook? No, not really. Um, but it's worth calling out because there are some options that are a little more powerful, in my opinion. Okay? Um, and you can add or remove folders on the fly and sync with Office 365. So what does that mean? That means that um, if I'm in the client and I want to add a folder, I can do that. And if I go and look in portal.office365.com, log into my webmail, bang, it's there. Fantastic. Not every client does that. It's worth pointing out. Um, so... Uh, kind of a good thing, right? Okay. Here are the downsides. You have to know that you need to install the EWS library. I'll show that in a minute. Uh, you need to set up the account and online accounts before it'll work. Yep, you got to know that too. Uh, need to know how to use outlook.office365.com. Uh, so that's not what I actually meant to say, but you have to use that URL. We'll get there in a second. Uh, and doesn't have the best search, like I was just saying. There are things with better and worse search, but it's not the best search. So, you have to know this. Those are the two packages you need to install to get Evolution on there. So, Evolution and Exchange Web, or the, uh, excuse me, the Exchange Web Services or EWS Library. They're named a little different depending on your distro. That's Solus. That's what it looks like there. In any of your Ubuntu or Debian distributions, it'll be... EWS something, 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 something. So really, search EWS, you find it. Um, so that's one thing. But wait. Online accounts, you need to go to Microsoft Exchange, so you got to do this. Yep, we're still not done, sorry. Then, after you open that, you need to put nameatcompany.com, your password, and then in the custom field, you have to actually put nameatcompany.com, which would be your name, at company.com. Um, and the server, outlook.office365.com. That was the piece that I mentioned a minute ago. That's also black magic that most people don't know is what you need to do, um, which is sad but true. Um, I'm not going to admit how many hours I've wasted on all of this stuff. And for those that don't use 365, if your company isn't up to date, you do your own server name. Yes, which is why it says Microsoft Exchange. I'm glad you said that. Shannon has brought this up now in both, uh, both talks, and I'm really happy she's here because I keep forgetting to say that. So, yeah, so if you don't use Office 365, um, it will work in Exchange. Uh, just point it to your Exchange server. Um, what I said in the last talk, once, ironically, she prompted me, was, um, you know, take your IT guy out to lunch, buy him a beer, do whatever. He will tell you one if you have multiple Exchange servers that you can use. If you want to be a little more subversive, if you have a Windows box that they gave you, I'm sorry. But you can go into Outlook and you can see what uh, server you're actually connecting to. Use that. That's it. It's pretty simple. Um, so, anyways, so there's that. This was me very cranky when I got this far, because holy crap do you have to know stuff to get this to work. 
and also know what the hell to plug in, and it pissed me off. This was the first time I went through this, just so you know, uh, when I originally wrote this, which was uh, over a year ago. So, anyways, this is me woo-sawing. I had to remind myself, which is why it's in the actual presentation, to have deep calming breaths and think about walking through the meadow. Okay. On to the next victim. Email client. I, I mean, that would be Mailspring. <clears throat> Anybody who knows what Mailspring is already knows where I'm going with this one. Good, bad, or indifferent. Um, so, Mailspring. Electron haters, please, cover your ears. I'm very, very sorry. No, seriously. Please, cover your ears. You're probably going to want to stab me very soon. Um, so, what the heck does Mailspring look like? Well, it's pretty. Um, that's the first thing you get after you... Uh, Pseudo snap install, mail spring. You don't have to say state like tac tac stable or anything anymore. Um, it has an auto updating snap package. That's a great or a terrible thing depending on who you are. Um, but uh, it's Electron too. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep pointing that out. I'm sorry. Create a mail spring. I you suck. So this sucks. And Ben Gateau, who is the lead engineer who originally made Nihilus, which is what Mailspring came out of, kept the frigging Mailspring ID. And that makes me grumpy. Here's why it makes me grumpy. Is that he left this in there so that if you pay the $8 a month for the pro features, and I'm getting to that, um, you, it is an easier way for them to convert you from a free version to a business version. That sucks. I shouldn't have to do that unless I want to pay you a thing. Now, another reason he does that is some of the features, and again, I'll get to that in a minute, it is easier for them to track some of the features that you're using. It makes me cranky. So I should... Go ahead. The third -party service without signing up for them first. I'm sorry, say that one more time? You can't even connect with Outlook uh, or tell a group without even giving them this information. You must give them this. You will not be able to use Mailspring if you do not give them this, which makes me grumpy. Um, now, I can tell you, to clarify, because I've, I've spoken with Ben on Twitter and a few other places, Ben will probably break my nose if I don't point this out, uh, that uh, when you set this up, um, none of this is going through their servers. Because that was one of the big contentions about Nihilus Mail and things of that prior. There was a point where all of your mail was going out and in through their servers. That made people very grumpy. Um, they rewrote um, an entire sync engine that now lives locally on the client that now lives on your machine. None of that actually goes through their back end now. That's worth pointing out. The only thing that lives on anything that they control has to do with those business-centric features I just mentioned a moment ago. I haven't told you what the features are, but those features I keep alluding to, okay? So, worth pointing out, but it makes me mad. It's stupid. I shouldn't have to do that for a free email client. So, as you see, I felt like they were trolling me. I can't believe I need the friggin' ID. And I sighed and got really grumpy and made the damn ID so that I could get the damn screenshots. Friggin' ID. Anyways... Office 365 is a friggin' button click. That's kind of nifty. I mean, I'll give credit where credit's due. That's pretty damn simple, right? From there, enter your creds. This is simple. My password is not hello, hello kitty, one, two, three, four, pink. Anyways, so lots and lots and lots of blurred things because I tied it to an account that I actually care about. Um, but this is basically what the interface looks like with no other exciting things. On the far end of the navigation that I don't show you, right below that would be any of your custom folders, labels, blah, 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 in your Office 365 account. Um, something else to note, when you make an account with Mailspring, they have, like, this weird, like, bracket, Mailspring bracket folder that shows up in Office 365, which is kind of goofy. Again, it has to do with some of the features that they have. It makes me grumpy. They shouldn't do that. More things that Ben's probably going to yell at me about. Anyways, so that's Mailspring, uh, the basics of it at least. That folder shows up on the Office 365 
Five Pro as a version? The, yes. Yeah, yes, it will. Yep. And the reason that I know that was is because way back when, when I used that originally, um, it was still there. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm like, why the hell is this here? Oh, thanks, Mailspring. You suck. Now i got to figure out how to delete it. It was kind of annoying. I'm not going to lie. So anyways, Ben will get mad at me about that, but whatever. Uh, so anyways, when should you use this? When you need up and running yesterday and you just want mail and, excuse me, contacts, the search is pretty good. Uh, like I said, contacts and mail, relatively quick. It syncs very quickly. It indexes stuff locally. Um, but basically, this is, I need the easy button. That is what this is. Okay. Um, it is not a complete drop-in replacement, though, for Outlook. So that's worth noting. So if you really need a calendar, this is not the solution for you unless you're going to tie things into like GNOME Calendar or something else. But understand, this is not a single application to do all those things. So, like I said a moment ago, full mail, contact support, um, integrates well with pretty much any distribution that supports uh, snaps because it's an auto-updating snap. That's not everybody. Um, but it will run on Windows and Mac as well, just as a, so you know, I just want to be fair to Mailspring. So auto-updating snap, that's pretty cool. Ben put a lot of work into that, so kudos to Ben for that. Um, that's kind of cool. So some of the business features. Um, snooze email for later. You can set up follow-up reminders, so you can say, come back in a couple days and punch me in the face so I remember that, you know, I need to, you know, email Bob about the presentation, Right? Um, stalker level information about who you're emailing and I do mean stalker level information um, if you click on the little person icon wait let me go back Whee! person icon whoosh, right there over on the right um, it will show you Facebook information LinkedIn information it'll show everything about this person it is the amount of information you would get from paid for services that you bolt on to like Gmail and other things like that <coughs> as to who you're talking to, what they do, and link tracking and a few other things as to what they're reading that you sent them. It's ridiculous. So, about that. <clears throat> it's, it's a feature. Um, so, and again, as I mentioned a moment ago, tells you who opened emails and does link tracking like other paid services. So, you know, all of those delightful marketing services for marketing teams that people pay for to know who opened the thing, whether it's MailChimp or Constant Contact or Insert Thing Here, that gives you all those analytics, you can get them all right here. That's awesome and horrifying all at the same time. Yes? So if they're putting, like, traction pictures and stuff in the emails you send them, uh, where are those requests being sent when they open to the... I like you so much because you immediately knew what they were doing without me even saying it, and it makes me happy. Um, yes, that's exactly what they're doing. They're adding tracking pixels, and that's a great question, isn't it? That's very creepy what they're doing. That's kind of horrifying. Where's the opt-out? Especially if I'm on the other end, right? That's kind of my point. So, like, mm, lots of things make me cranky with this. So again, it's kind of like the Diet Coke of proprietary software. <clears throat> it won't kill you right away, and it's easy and convenient, but it's not necessarily the right thing to pick or do all the time. Okay? So, yeah, there's that. So we're talking about like, uh, putting this in with um, Office 365, which mm -hmm. is generally business users, right? Yes. Does that not come in conflict with corporate policies regarding... Sure could, couldn't it? I mean, it could. I mean, it depends on... It depends on, it depends on the company, right? It depends on the company. It depends on what you're okay with. It depends on a um, whole bunch of things, right? Um, so that's kind of part of the reason I put it in here because it's like, on one hand, a lot of that information would be fantastic for a business user. On the other hand, if you actually give a crap about your security or privacy for your company or who you're talking to, you might cringe and run away screaming, right? There's kind of no middle. Well, I mean, it seems interesting from, like, a personal aspect, mm -hmm. from an enterprise aspect, that's, like... Horrifying, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Burn it with fire. Don't let it in my house. Absolutely. I, I completely agree with you. Also, from a personal aspect, you know, the tracking pixels are probably not coming from your home server. Nope. Someone who's always on. Yep. Yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> but remember, nothing's actually getting stored except for supposedly those handful of little business features on their server. Yes, sir. I mean, um, it seems to me that this is a serious issue in the design of a generic mail client. It should be possible for a mail client to have a setting that says, render this message as ASCII text, or I guess in this modern era, UTF-8, and don't do any um, HTML, no links, no mm -hmm. images. Mm -hmm. Thunderbird does that already. Uh, <laughs> ignores images by default. Right. So, wait, who said Thunderbird? Are you a big fan of or not a fan of? Oh, stick around. You're, <laughs> you're going to hate me before this is done. Um, no, you're absolutely right. I don't disagree with you. Now, one thing I do want to point out now that I've kind of poked a bunch of holes in a bunch of the link tracking and the embedded pixels, as uh, you know, uh, that person back there was uh, very, very correctly pointing out, um, you can technically turn that off. It is a button press um, before you send or receive any messages. That's actually the only reason that I used it at all was because I had a way to turn that off. And I didn't want to send that to anybody I was communicating with, right? So anybody who would be using that, I would highly recommend that they turn that feature off. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, next to where it says uh, search all email, there's a goofy little monitoring, monitoring icon, if you will. Um, click on that and you will not um, be sending that. And when you're composing your first email, there's another icon, creepily enough an eyeball, you can uncheck <laughs> that every concurrent mail uh, message that you compose will have the default of that off. Those are the two, uh, uh, those are the two actions you need to take to disable that. Just so you all know, okay? So there are ways to turn it off. I hate that it's there to begin with. I would rather that be a bolt-on or something later after I decided I wanted to pay you money, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, not, uh, not a huge fan. So, uh, like I said, mentioned before, more downsides. Um, stupid Mailspring ID, why? It's free, why do I need to give you a friggin' ID? That's stupid, I hate it, burn it with fire. That shouldn't be a thing. Um, like I mentioned a moment ago, there's a pro account for $8 a month. That's great for sustainability. I'm a huge fan of that, but get it out of my face if I want your free version, in my opinion. Um, doesn't have calendar support. So again, if you need that, you're not doing it in this application. It's Electron-based. That makes me personally cringe. I'm not a huge fan. I know some people are. No. Um, so this is the point of the presentation where... Most of the rest of this I did last night. <clears throat> and I don't say that to tell you how much I did last night. I tell you that because I literally did get a headache last night after doing the last portion of this. Um, so I really did need Tylenol, and yeah, it really did kind of suck. Now, uh, that's right, guy in the back likes Thunderbird. This is where he murders me. So... <laughs> Uh, Thunderbird using DAV Mail Gateway. Now, there are many, many different ways of using Thunderbird to interact with Office 365 or any, uh, you know, mail account you have, right? There's lots of different ways to do it. Um, there are some pay options for add-ons, things like that, um, that will abstract some of it away from you. I'm going with DAV Mail because it is the only fully free you don't have to pay a thing to anyone way to do it. Um, be, uh, so you want a calendar? Because you can't do that with IMAP. Um, well, correct. And I'm using I'm using calendar. Right. So you're gonna have you're going to have Lightning, which is built in, which they still ask you yes or no, which is a stupid question to me. Um, and they also still don't fully support calendaring out of the box with Office 365, which is one of my biggest gripes. Um, but I'm not using HomePod. What's that? HomePod and or NextPod. I mean, I'm just pointing straight to the calendar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't disagree with you at all. I don't disagree with you at all. Yeah. Um, so... And folders. Folders don't work very well. Yeah. Also true. Um, if, you have, if you have it installed on multiple computers with multiple users, the same, the same um, email account and email account. Oh, why 
Well, and and I mean to be fair. Well, and and I mean to be fair. So somebody brought up folders. This is another great point. You can't really actually um, <clears throat> move. Uh, what was it? Was it moving? I think it was moving. I don't think you can actually, or at least there was a time, you couldn't move the friggin' folders around without a plugin. Oh. Yeah, I think, yeah, you, you were like, ah, you could do it with a plugin. No. The accounts, the right. accounts you can't move around. The folders, I don't know because I do no. alphabetically sorting, so if I want to you can't. a place, I you can't. in front of it. See, see, I'm that annoying guy who I'm sitting there and I might, I, I might have like a to-do folder and I'm like, Cool, all right, I'm going to break this out by categories. And it's like, this is today, this is tomorrow, this is that other category I want to put this in. And I'll be like, right click, add. <gasps> Shit, I want to move that. <laughs> and I can't. So that's stupid to me. Um, you know, uh, and here's the thing. Thunderbird's been around forever, and Thunderbird can do tons and tons and tons and tons of things. That's the best and worst thing about Thunderbird all at the same time, Right? Um, because there are entire swatches of the community that will murder you if you even talk about taking one little piece of functionality away from them that might be obscure and ridiculous, that might deserve its own app, right? Uh, on, the, on the Thunderbird platform, right? But the problem is, is that from where this came from and all the technical debt that's there, people didn't think of it as a platform back then, right? It was an app. And they wanted that app to do friggin' everything, right? Because it was all the things that there wasn't another bucket or an app to do. I get where they, like, how they got here, but it's really, really important, which is why I was poking Ryan Sipes yesterday and I really wished he was here. Um, that's why they need to be very, very careful and specific about what they do when they completely rebrand and change in the very near future. Because it's either going to be amazing or it's going to be their death note, right? Because that's kind of where they are. Um, that's my opinion. We're talking about loading features for email. Are we talking about calendaring at the same time? Doesn't that seem to be... So, so I mean, we're talking, we're talking calendaring, we're talking mail, we're talking contacts, right? To me, those are the big three when you're talking about something that's going to bolt onto Office 365. Mm -hmm. um, and there are ways to do all of that, right? With, with, with Dabmo and everything that we're going to go through. Absolutely, but they all have to be one app. You're absolutely right. Um, maybe the answer is they don't have to be, right? Maybe I download uh, Thunderbird, right? And then maybe each of those pieces are, as you said, apps, plugins, insert terminology here, right? It could absolutely be three things. You're absolutely right. They could be three totally different interfaces. It might make more sense. Yes, sir, and I, I didn't forget you over that. Yep. How many times a day do you get a mail message that says you are invited to this meeting? and it has an, an ICS uh, attachment in it, which goes to your calendar, which then tells you when the meeting is, and mm -hmm. what your conflicts are, and, and who's going to go. I mean, if they're not one app, it certainly is how the real world works. I'm going to have a meeting, send an email message to Jeff saying, you're invited to this meeting. <clears throat> then that goes into your calendar. And uh, if you happen to be away from your computer at the moment and you want to call the person, wouldn't it be nice if that person's contact information, including their telephone number, was at your fingertips? So while it doesn't necessarily mean that they all have to be in one application, they do have to be able to interoperate with one another reasonably well, somehow. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, and I, mean, I don't think anybody would disagree with you here, right? It, it, w it would be the implementation and how that would actually shake out. But I, completely, I think everybody would agree with you that they have to interoperate and talk. Mm -hmm. They have to. Yes, miss? But, it sounds exactly like the model of, I get emailed a URL, I click the URL, my browser opens. Like, that's what you're looking for, but that doesn't mean that the mail client has to be the browser. Correct. You're absolutely right. I, I, I mean, I, I, I totally agree with you. There's somebody over here. Who did I miss? I was going to no. throw tasks out there. Yeah. But they're kind of calendar, they're sort of calendar related. Like in the Calvin world, your tasks are on your calendar. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the four big features, the ones that you mentioned. That's what you've got in Outlook, which is Correct. corporate standard for emails. Right. Know, and that's why we expect it in other clients. Exactly right. So, so, I mean, and here's the thing. Going back to a lot of the things that got brought up a minute ago, right? Maybe it's wrong. It's what the corporate world is known for how many decades, right? That's maybe they, right. I mean, maybe they got it wrong. Maybe there's a better way to do it we haven't seen yet, right? Um, I sure as hell hope there is, um, you know, in, in my opinion. But, so we'll start walking through this. 
Um, so, is there anybody here who doesn't know what the hell dav mail is? Excellent! I am not surprised at all, because most people have no idea what the hell dav mail is. So... <clears throat> Ray, what's dav mail? What's that? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> and it's like I knew you'd be here. I even made a slide for you. I'm not omnipotent, I swear. Um, so, now this is a whole... Now there's going to be a little bit of heavy text. This is literally directly from dav mail's website which is a horrifyingly garbage sourceforge.net site. Okay, but this is basically what it is. So it is basically a gateway that allows you to do all the things we were just talking about, in essence. So you're able to set this up to communicate over that EWS protocol, right, that we've been talking about a lot for all the email clients, to the Office 365 backend. So another way to say that is it spreckens the Microsoft right, so that Thunderbird doesn't have to. And then Thunderbird will talk to DavMail because DavMail is really smart and spreckens the Thunderbird. So it basically is your translator, if you will, at the UN. So that's basically what it does. And it does that for mail, it does it for contacts, and it even does it for calendaring. Bitchin', right? Okay. So, more huge blocks of text. Um, this is just more from their site. Uh, one, to make sure nobody from uh, who works on DavMail is going to like put a hit out on me. And two, because I want to make sure everybody gets the chance to see what they actually say about this product, <coughs> right? Um, and for those interested, if you, I, I don't know if you read faster than me. My wife reads 8,000 times faster than I do. Um, it is also Java-based. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I like this guy in the face. Oh, yes, yes, you feel my plane. Plane? You feel my plane and my pain. Yes, sir. This is one of the most remarkable slides I have ever seen in my career. Oh, dear. It says standard compliant clients and Microsoft Exchange in the same sentence. Oh, wow. <laughs> if, if I had not seen it with my own eyes, I would not have believed it. Oh, dear. So maybe this is a bad time to tell you there's actually a guy from Microsoft in the room. Uh, but, uh, yeah. They fired me. It's What's okay. It? Yeah. Ah, wow. <laughs> so, so is that saying that it's using IMAP for the email? Yes. Okay. It is. Is that good or bad? Uh, <laughs> you'll see in a minute. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so it uses IMAP, and actually, um, you'll see a couple more slides where we actually get into um, configuring it, and it's ironically in French, because that's what's on their site, um, which is kind of awesome. So, um, <laughs> but anyways, we'll get into that in a second. But um, yeah, so again, and you'll notice, uh, I also absolutely love on their website, Linux, <laughs> parentheses, Ubuntu, because you know, there's no other flavor of friggin' Linux in the universe. <laughs> it's just Ubuntu, baby. Nothing else. Anyways. Well, they tested on. Right? So the TLDR, DavMail Gateway is a Java-based shim to make Thunderbird work the way it already should with Exchange and Office 365. Period. Cool. Even Thunderbird guys shake it as, yeah, he's like, that's totally the what, what should be out of the box. I agree. And I've told Ryan several times, he won't stop. He's like, tss, tss. Yeah. He's not, he, he's like, yes, yes, I know. Yes, we want that too. Um, so anyway, so again, um, all these screenshots are from Solus or directly from DavMail Gateway. That's why it looks a certain way. Um, so I didn't want anybody to attack me if they're like, why isn't it a bunch of... Sorry, not running it right now. Don't hurt me. Didn't have a work laptop. So you're going to install the OpenJDK. Basically, um, TLDR on that, install Java on your machine. Must be current stable release of Java. Um, a word to the wise, if you're running Tumbleweed, anybody running Tumbleweed in the room? Okay. If you, even if you're not running Tumbleweed, if you run like the dev versions of Java, this breaky. So, and it happened to me when I was running uh, Tumbleweed because it was running like the dev Java 9 version way before it was released. And, I'm, and I was sitting there ripping my hair out not knowing why it broke. So, stick to stable. So we're actually using the developer kit, not the runtime environment? So, um, you can actually uh, download both. If I'm not mistaken, I think it says JDK and JRE, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but really, as long as you have, I, I want to say it was the JRE, um, cause I think the actual bunch command was literally like sudo apt install like default JRE. I think that's the piece they actually care about. And that's actually in the, the coming slides, but good point. So 
So now at this point, we're just gonna, I'm just making another um, clarification. So at this point, let's assume we're running an Ubuntu-based distribution, okay, whether it be Pop! OS or 18.04, or whatever, um, and you got DAVMail directly from the repos, that it is there, you don't have to compile it, um, and let's assume you have Java installed, okay? These are just kind of the uh, variables we're gonna operate or parameters we're gonna operate under moving forward, fair enough? Cool. Okay, so, and uh, something else I wanted to call out, it can be done on other distros, it's kind of out of scope, and you'll see why in a minute, because there's a whole bunch of stuff to explain how to get this all to work right. Um, if anybody wants to talk to me after the talk, please come up, I will happily talk to you about how to do that, because um, this is by far the most portable solution across friggin' anything, okay? Um, so this is what DAVMail Gateway looks like. It's kind of hideous, but it works, okay? Um, so what I did here was, um, at the very top, that can be set to, uh, the protocol exchange can be set to auto or EWS. Um, auto should be smart enough to pick that up. If it's being doofy, set it to EWS. It's very simple. The URL, <clears throat> this is part of black magic. Because everyone's going to look at it and be like, that's not outlook.office 36. Nope, nope, it's not. It absolutely 100% is not. It is talking to, if you notice, EWS specifically in the URL. So it's talking to a piece of what I would consider um, historical functionality that still exists in Office 365 that lets you talk to it. Now, something else to point out about that is that this has changed multiple times. And if it does, and you don't know, you're screwed. So that's going to happen. It hasn't happened to me. Well, yeah. Whenever I was running it, and, and I ran it for over a year, so nobody pulled the rug out from under me. But I want to call that out, and I call it out later in the talk too, but that could be a thing. So um, we were talking about IMAP earlier. So you'll notice the ports that you can use. You can use POP, IMAP, SMTP, um, CalDAV, LDAP, all this other good stuff, okay? You can change those ports to absolutely whatever the hell you want as long as they match here and Thunderbird. Um, something else to call out is, is by default, um, the communication between Thunderbird and this is not necessarily encrypted. But you don't necessarily care because if you look at the URL, it's going over SSL, okay? So what's actually leaving your machine is, via, is being encrypted via SSL, right? Something to point out. And again, there are ways to set this up with local SSL and certificates and all kinds of other stuff depending on how crazy you want to get. So a lot of that's kind of out of scope for this. But again, I want you to know it exists and it can be done, okay? Okay. So we're going to hit pause on DAVMail now that everybody has now learned that it's a Java app that is black magic that makes things work, right? And we're going to hop over to Thunderbird. <clears throat> so you'll go to your repository and you'll download Thunderbird because you can't. Solus has the stable one. It'll work the same for beta, at least. I didn't go much farther than that, but really, it'll work. Um, I've tested both. So you get Thunderbird installed. Then when you set up your mail account, this is a little bit, not black magic, but it's a little bit different. So you'll notice you're setting up local host. You're not pointing it to anything. Because again, a minute ago, like I said, it spreckens the DAV mail, not the Outlook, or not the uh, Office 365 or Exchange. So you're going to set it to those ports. Notice 1143 is the IMAP port that was set in DAV mail a couple slides ago. Same thing with 1025. That's your SMTP port. Same port. Okay. Um, and from there, you're good to go. Notice SSL is basically none. Again, like I said, if you don't have that set up, when they're talking, not talking that way, okay? So, if everything worked, if, huge if. No, I'm just kidding. Because as, as you notice, we've taken a lot of steps. <laughs> we ain't done yet. Um, you should see something like this. Because Thunderbird wants to scare the hell out of you because it's not encrypted. Oh my God, gonna die! Okay, but this is actually a really good screen because it means you actually managed to do everything else right. <laughs> um, it's the first time in my life I was like, show me the red screen of death. I just want to know it works. So, okay, so at this point, email set up. Now we got to set up calendaring. All of that was just to get friggin' email set up, okay? 
Okay. <laughs> so, this is totally what I do all day. So, okay. So, within Thunderbird, you create a new calendar on the network. I know you can all handle finding create a new calendar, but anyways. So, you'll pick Caldav. You'll put in that, sort of. You, obviously, you'll amend that slightly for what you need, right? Um, so it's going to be, you know, mail at company.com. So it's going to be you. Please do not put in mail at company.com and then send me pissed off emails. Um, <laughs> you won't be able to. Um, that's a lie. You'll be able to. You just won't be able to schedule a meeting with me about it. To yell at me. <laughs> Anyways, so, okay. So you're going to do that. Okay, again, piece of black magic. If you don't know what the hell DAV mail is, you're never going to find that URL. Let me tell you, you won't. So <laughs> after that, name it whatever the hell you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, I left it as that because I'm a lazy, lazy man, and it was on their site. But you can name that Flubby the Wonder Monkey. It will still work. Okay? Um, and for the love of God, change the color. Um, what's wrong with the color? What's that? Listen, <laughs> it's not easy being green. Where's the open Susa people? See, they, they, they're just like, yeah, what? The green's fine? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So now you're going to get prompted for authentication. Again, name at company.com you know, hello kitty, one, two, three, four, and you'll be ready to rock and roll. Um, so you can use the password manager to remember the password. Again, pay attention to where it's saving things and how it's saving things, yada, 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 okay? Um, most normal sane human beings will probably just click the damn box and hit okay. But I'm just telling you, you know, just bear in mind. Okay, so now at this point, theoretically, we have calendaring. So now I immediately throw us directly into setting up contacts. So you're going to open the address book again. I trust you can all find that. The address book, you're going to go to file, new, LDAP directory, okay? From here, you're going to basically call it exchange, local host, right? OU equals people. Yes, it is OU equals people. There are many, many people that I have talked to that did not put OU equal people, and it failed. It failed very hard. So it must be OU equal people, okay? Um, notice the port. Way back when, several slides ago, it was 1389. That port matches, okay? Uh, domain slash user. You'll notice on the slide, I said, this is stupid. Don't do that. Another way to write that in Microsoft Ease is just name it company.com. It's same thingy, okay? Because you're still defining the domain in the friggin' email. So hit OK. <clears throat> I recommend not hitting and yeah. Because that will cancel it. At least I think it will. Okay, and then from there, if you go to composition in uh, uh, the addressing tab, uh, you can select that directory server. You're basically saying, Thunderbird, stupid face, go look here when I ask you for contact. And it's like, cool, I can do that. So, so this is one of my favorite slots. <clears throat> because as you're all reading it, it only took me 20 friggin' slides. Yes, I counted, because I was pissed to show you how to set this up in Thunderbird. Now, if we notice, that is a hell of a lot more slides and steps than anything else we've set up today. Now, that makes me sad. <laughs> it's like I knew I'd be parched. Okay. When should you use this? When the other options listed either don't work or don't provide you the requisite features you require. I'm looking at calendaring, mail spring. Um, when it has to run on something ridiculously insane, like a video toaster, it'd probably work. I can almost guarantee it'll work. If we can get Java and Dab Mail running, it'll work. So when you decide to be a Thunderbird developer and make this less painful for me personally, See, there's a guy who's about, he's like, yes, yes, roll up your sleeves, Ray, become a Thunderbird dev, right? You know, let's Thunderdome this and fix it together. Um, so, features, right? Full mail, contact, um, calendaring, um, after you get dev mail set up, if, once you get Java and everything configured, right? Um, we'll run on literally any distro. Dav mail runs friggin' anywhere. It's, it's literally Java. Right? I mean, it runs friggin' everywhere. Um, what else? Um, matter of fact, you can even set this up on Windows. If you hate Outlook and you love Thunderbird, this will totally work. So, I mean, even for, like, any Windows people in the crowd, this beats the hell out of Outlook, in my opinion. Sorry. Um, 
So more features. Um, actually has the best search, or pretty damn close, if I'm honest. I actually don't, I've never, ever, ever actually really had a problem with it when I used it, and I used it for a long time. Um, it actually is really, really good. The filtering is really good. It's just very good. Can the search search within documents like Outlook can? Uh, I believe the answer today is yes, actually. Okay. I think it can. Um, and you can add or delete folders on the fly. You can't move them, but you can add them. Um, so that's good news. Downsides. <clears throat> This is where everybody who loves Thunderbirds is going to break my knees. So, it can break for no good reason if you update Java to a newer version faster than it wants. It can break if Microsoft decides to change those magic URLs without telling us, or if nobody knows. Sorry, it gets worse. Uh, can break depending on how Office 365 Admin has your instance set up. That EWS goofy email or uh, link that we talked about earlier, <laughs> there's a way to shut that off at the instance level. So if your Office 365 admin hates you, that no worky. So use that at your own risk. And when I say own risk, I mean <laughs> it might not work. Is that the same for all clients? Like are they using AWS into you anyways? Um, no. So, so they're not all using that specific URL. So like um, what uh, Evolution, for example, is actually just using the actual straight protocol as opposed to relying on that URL to do the relay. So even if that changed tomorrow, Evolution, Honey Badger, doesn't care. Because it's, it, it's Spreckenzing the Microsoft. So, yeah. Um, by far the most complicated setup. I don't think anybody would argue that at this point to actually get this working right. Um, requires Java to make dev mail, dev mail work. Java, a lot of people think Java's a giant security hole. So, I mean, that could be a security concern depending on who you are. Um, consumes the most resources of any of the solutions, especially depending on how you configure it. Because you can actually have it sit on a gig of RAM because, um, you know, depending on how much you want to have, like, cached and ready to rock and roll and make it more responsive. <laughs> Has unexpected settings that are actually controlled in Firefox, not Thunderbird. This was one of the most interesting things that I found when I got really pissed off at Thunderbird. <clears throat> so that setting I was talking about a moment ago is that cache setting, right? And you can crank it up to 1024. Um, so I did. But that's all the more it'll let you do. I don't know why. They just, for some, no, you get a gig. Okay, but I have like 16 gigs of RAM. What if I want to get like four? No, you don't know what you want. One gig. And I'm just like, that's very Apple of you, Thunderbird. <laughs> um, so anyways, so I kept setting it, and I closed Thunderbird, and I opened it back up, and I'm like, why the hell's it at the default again? It was like 325 meg or something like that. I'm like, why? That's stupid. I don't like that. I don't want that. I just told you a gig. Stop fighting me. So... When I was looking, I realized the actual setting that governs that lives in Firefox. No. You have to go to about colon config, punch that in the face there, bounce everything, and go back for the damn thing to take the setting. And there's three settings, by the way, you got to change. Not one. I was pissed. Okay? So, yeah, pretty much that was the day I'm like, okay, Thunderbird, I love you. I've known you for a long time. This is why I flush it down the toilet to fix you. Because that's ridiculous that I need to go in there to change that setting. And that's just one nuance that's been fun. Yes, sir, you had a question. Oh, is this going to change now that Mozilla is actually getting rid of Thunderbird? There's so, a divorce going between... Firefox and right now. So, so basically, Mozilla is technically its own thing. Yeah. Sort of, kind of. Um, great question. I'm not sure. Because they have to basically rewrite Thunderbird because all of the dependencies on Zool and all those wonderful things they've built for all these years are going bye-bye. Yeah. So there's only a certain amount of time that they're going to have. I don't know what that amount of time is. Um, to rewrite, rebrand, and make it not suck. Um but nobody really knows what that is, unfortunately. So, so if you don't have Firefox on your computer, you don't use Firefox at all, you can't use Thunderbird? You absolutely can use Thunderbird, but this particular setting can't change. Good luck. You get 325 megs. Not a penny more. That's all you get. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, which is kind of crazy, but true. Yes, sir, in the back. Files for Firefox, which allows you to have instances 
Firefox is completely different about config and whatnot. Maybe if it doesn't explode. Potentially, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, let's see what else. Um, so it consumes a ton of resources. I, I, I told you the, the ridiculous Firefox experience that I literally almost threw my laptop out the window over. Um, it's slow in comparison to other solutions when updating mail. If you have a whole bunch of, like, when you're doing your initial sync, it takes for friggin' ever. Like, it actually legitimately, like, even between stable and beta, there's a noticeable difference. Like, they're doing a lot of good work to make it faster. But man, does it suck today. Um, at least the stable version. Um, so... So here's the overall summary. So we wish Evolution Mail Client had better search and was more portable between distros. You can use it between quite a few, but we still wish it was easier to move around, right? And gave us the same sexy notifications and integration. Mailspring doesn't even give us a calendar and it's friggin' Electron. And I need a damn Mailspring ID to make the damn thing work. Setting up Thunderbird and Dav Mail Gateway makes you hate yourself by the time you figure out how to get all the damn things working. Uh, so there's that. So really what I'm telling you is, is that if you're not using evolution, you might be doing it wrong depending on what you do. Uh, which is not really that popular of a opinion, I know. But, uh, that's my two cents. Now, I have a question for you guys. Since obviously you've gathered which solution I'm probably running, um, does anyone know how to change the keyboard shortcuts in evolution mail client? I will literally buy you dinner if you know. I will be impressed. No one? From Gnome Straight. What's that? From Gnome Straight, like this keyboard shortcuts instead of Gnome. Specific to it. To clarify. I actually, I actually know what... You don't have to recompile. I actually, you do not have to recompile. I know what you're thinking. It doesn't work anymore. That was the first thing I tried. <laughs> yep. Write JavaScript. <laughs> nope. There's actually a legitimate way to do it in a config file. I'll give you a hint. Everyone's like, what? Do you surrender? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's actually what you can do. If you go into that Excel's file, I'll show you in a minute. Someone's over there, pseudo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pseudo. Um, Why? Why? In your, in your own you're over there. In your own computer. You're drunk. You don't Thunderdome and run as root? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, we could, we, we could debate that all day long. No. Uh, but yeah, so basically, if you remove the semicolon at the beginning of the line, um, and there's two sets of parens, and I'll show you this in a second, you can actually type in what you want, which is kind of neat. So you can literally change anything within reason uh, within the application, which is kind of friggin' rad. Um, so this is actually what it looks like. I apologize for it being this dark. Um, but basically, if you look at the line where I have the hideous red arrow that I put there quite on purpose, um, if you move, or rather, if you remove that uh, semicolon, uh, I change that from uh, primaries just uh, control. I change that from control W to control Q. It was a very subtle change. Um, what I actually did on my work machine was change um, archive to um, end on my keyboard and delete to delete which was kind of nice. But it just made going through thousands of emails ridiculously faster because now I'm just doing this all day long instead of ridiculous other emacsy like things that might break my hands. So, after all of that, questions. I'm going to suck wind for a minute. Okay, uh, I think you were first, you're next, you're third. Yes, sir. Uh, have you ever tried the Ericsson calendar client? Yes, sir. Uh, I have tried that. Um, How does that suck? So, uh, it does suck. Um, so, the problem is the support for it isn't fantastic. Um, it got to a point where the stable version broke and you had to use like the beta or dev version, I forget which it was, to make it work. Um, so that left a bad taste in my mouth, but more importantly, troubleshooting it was a bitch um, because you didn't know. So you were like updating and hoping. Not to mention you also have to basically download it, compile it, and build the XPI thing um, to drop in the plugin um, to Thunderbird. So like, can you do it? Yes. Do I still have it if the world ends? You bet I do. Do I use it? No. No, I don't. Um, okay, uh, you were next. On, on Thunderbird with Dad Mail. Yes. If you want to um, subscribe to, a, to another folder, do you still go through right click on the mailbox name? And then, um, oh, yeah, you can do that. Yes. Go to subscribe, or does it do, do any auto-popular? So, um... 
it depends because you can refresh that and it should pull it but it is best to go through and just make sure you're still subscribed to it i've seen i've seen weirdness so it's still best to subscribe just to cover your bases um but it, it should be smart enough to pull it should um yes miss you were next Archive or delete themselves like, after a certain like, period. This so, is going to be irrelevant in two weeks. Go away in two weeks. Email. Like, is that a thing you can tell any clients? Because I've been looking for it all over the place and never found it. it you mean like on a, by an individual email basis or by a folder? Either. So um, I get a lot of email list traffic that I automatically filter mm -hmm. in Thunderbird. The really heavy ones, unless I have starred a message, I want it to go away in 30 days, mm -hmm. and that's just right click on folder. Yeah, I, I was just going to say Thunderbird retention policy. Or, uh, the gentleman in the, in the back is absolutely right. So the question was, you know, can you can you basically set a archive or delete policy in any email client? Um, and as that gentleman rightly pointed out, retention policies in Thunderbird. Um, Evolution has the same thing. Um, you can set up uh, policies around when do you want to archive things, um, how far back do you want to sync, um, when do you want things to be auto-deleted, and you can set that at the fuller or macro levels. <coughs> You are most welcome. Other questions? Uh, oh, God, that was almost the same time. Okay, I'm going to go there, then you, sir. Yes? Do you know how to make Evolution auto, automatically read in calendaring appointments before you open the email, like when you receive them? So it will add it to the calendar automatically. So, 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 so actually, um, the way the calendaring works, if you have an Office 365 set up, for argument's sake, um, when you get them in mail now, it actually, even if you haven't accepted or anything, it still shows up on your calendar as a tentative, or basically as a, it's kind of like shaded out. Um, there's a gradient, but it still shows up and will sync. So even though you haven't taken an action, you can still go look and see um, right in your calendar. What I found with Evolution, it mm -hmm. takes to change server. Okay, fair enough. Is that if, unless I open the email with the appointment in it, it isn't automatically added to the calendar. And that's the problem, because I use Mutt to actually read the emails. <laughs> I just use Evolution for the calendar. I'll have to go look, uh, in all seriousness, because I, hmm, I, feel like, I feel like in Office 365, that, that's actually how I ironically go around, or, like, get around it a little bit. Office 365, when it's in Outlook, it automatically adds it to your calendar. So when, so when, when, Correct. when I go and open Outlook, yeah. for whatever horrid reason yeah. I go on Windows, my calendar's populated. But if only my Linux box is open. That's interesting, though. If my calendar isn't populated, it's like, open up in Evolution. I, I was, I was going to say, yeah, it's happening on the server side. Because like, even when I go to like portal.office365.com or whatever, it's there hanging out for me. And that piece of it does sync automatically with Evolution. So I don't think I've run into that yet. Well, my, my corporate exchange definitely does not do that. It's client side. Interesting. Oh, well, yeah, so, OWA does so it. well, I was going to say, then, then that sounds like a subtle difference between Exchange and Office 365, then, at least how the back end is doing. Right. That's interesting. And what version of Exchange are you on now? Ask Amazon. Uh, you know, I notice most of these problems can actually always run for themselves with Procmail. But who wants to run Procmail? <laughs> when you got to... It's fair. It's fair. Uh, I feel like I missed somebody. Yes, sir. You. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, so you've got the Mozilla Thunderbird divorce going on. Yes. Uh, how, how long before you, uh, uh, we can expect to be able to uh, reassess Thunderbird and see what, whether it's an interesting thing or not? That is okay. the million-dollar question. Um, I have been tormenting Ryan Sipes, who's their new community manager, for months now um, since he's taken over. And I also saw a recent interview he did with uh, Brian Lunduke, and there were talks around, um, you know, uh, words like electron were thrown out, email was thrown out, all kinds of stuff were thrown out, and they got real, real, real grumpy. So, but guys, I am way over. Um, I hate to yeah. cut this short, but guys, have a great day. Thank you.